Hey everybody and welcome to my shop. I have a real special video in store this go round. I picked up this great neck plane uh, quite a while ago and you know I think anybody can take a really nice plane and turn it into a good user but I think it's a lot more interesting to see if you can do it with a plane that maybe isn't known to be such a great plane. So spoiler alert I successfully turned this into a good looking competent user plane turned out to be a bit more of an adventure than I originally thought it would be so I decided to turn this into a series of videos I don't like my videos being much more than 10 minutes or so so this video is basically going to document the plane as I found it uh, for the obvious reasons it's going to be more or less the before pictures so you can compare them to what I ended up with but more importantly in my research I found very little on great neck planes and I had a lot of questions so I'm hoping some of you out there may know a little bit more about these things than I do and you can share. Uh, that would be great. And more importantly, I'm thinking some of you out there might be in the same situation I am and you're curious about the Great Neck Plains and would like to have more information. So here you go. Uh, the Great Neck Company is out of New York, that much I know. I know they've been making planes for quite a while. I think they're still making tools even to this day. But uh, as far as the older hand planes go, uh, very little information as to the quality of them or any type studies or anything like that. So it does say Great Neck down here and behind the knob it says G4 so I think this is an older one. My guess is it's pre-World War II but I don't know that. On the back side it looks like there's a brass depth adjustment knob. The uh, Y adjustment yoke is uh, two pieces of steel pressed together in a wishbone. It does have a frog adjustment screw which is nice. The depth adjustment knob is a smaller size and the lateral adjuster they bent the back into a U-shape. The furniture on it, the knob, appears to be painted red, probably a hard wood, and the tote seems to be uh, stained, varnished, lacquered, something mm -hmm. like that. Again, a uh, blonde hard wood, possibly something like Beecham. As I've seen pictures of these G4s, they have this front knob that's painted red. It's kind of a cross between a clown red and maybe something a little darker. It's not a very natural looking color. And the tote sort of has a golden oak type of tone to it. And I think they kind of come that way. Two-tone. Closer examination, the leading edge of it here seems to be a dark stain with the red hue for sure. And there also seems to be some drips of polyurethane or finish on it. Almost inclined to think that maybe somebody sanded the two faces. Might have finished them and as I look at it against the light it's probably not showing up on the camera. It doesn't seem overly smooth in the contours. And again I can see some reds down here and a couple. The finish has been worn away here. Up here it kind of looks like just a regular golden amber tone. I noticed on the bottom very late in the game. I don't know how well that's showing up, but it's that bright red, almost the color of the garnet paper, almost the tomato red. It's pretty much the same red as is on the knob. So I have a funny feeling the knob and the tote probably were finished the same way. I don't know why the tote came out so non-uniform compared to the knob. If I take it apart, there's a tab on the lever cap, so that's a good sign. Uh, some of the lesser planes of the era didn't have that. Iron and chip breaker look ordinary. Appears to have quite a shine on it. The chip breaker may have been nickel plated, hard to tell. And the lateral adjuster is just a single piece of steel. Looks like it might be bent a little bit. The yoke seems to have a sloppy fit. So I'll take this apart and we'll pick it up from there. Uh, several months ago I sprayed all the critical areas, put some uh, oil on all the areas that I could reach and the disassembly went uh, very straightforward. So here are all the parts and pieces and let me just hit some of the highlights. The uh, Y adjustment yoke here has a gigantic hole in it and there's the pin that fits in there. Not a very snug fit but it is what it is. I noticed that this Y yoke, it's riveted but uh, they slide against each other and I was thinking of peening that rivet to tighten it up a little bit but after thinking about it this sits 
in the knob so the left and right side of this yoke are going to be operating pretty much at the same time so I'm not really so sure how critical it is that that be riveted tight together. The screws that hold the frog down have washers built onto them. The two bolts that hold the wood in place, uh, they're not barrel nuts with brass or anything, they're just steel. Looks like a lot of the parts and pieces have been nickel plated. The uh, cap iron, these bolts, this tab that goes on the frog adjustment, and the uh, tab. And this looks like it may have been nickel plated as well, hard to tell. And the brass nut is in good shape and it's a tight fit between the yoke and the, uh, the nut, so that's good. The frog receiver, looks like there's four points of contact, like legs on a table, two up top and two down low. And it looks as though these areas were machined. Looks like this was machined. So overall, I'm tempted to think this may have been a late pre-World War II, maybe late 30s, early 40s. Again, I'm just guessing. If any of you out there have any great information, any resources, feel free to point me that way. I'm also very encouraged there's a lot of sawdust all in the plane, so it's clearly used by somebody. The finishes look okay. The iron, again a lot of sawdust there. If you look at it, it's a pretty cleanly defined edge, so I'm encouraged by that as well. And I cannot see any kind of logo, even under magnification, I couldn't see anything. The lateral adjuster looks pretty heavy-duty rivet on both sides holding that in place, so I'm not even going to consider taking that off. Well, there are the parts and pieces. Now the real fun begins. And, you know, it crosses my mind with the uh, furniture hardware being just steel screws. Maybe this is a World War II or post-World War II vintage. I don't really know. But if any of you guys out there know, please let me know. I'd appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next videos where, like I say, the real fun begins. The second video in this series is going to be more of the details on how I actually tuned it up and got the thing working like a champ. And the final video focuses on the knob and the tote and the depth adjustment knob, getting those to look like a million bucks. If you get any comments, uh, like, subscribe, let me know. You know, I love to read them. And as always, uh, stay out of the hot sun. And I look forward to catching up with you all on the next one.